was if, if he was to get there, I'd probably say Chris Christie. I would expect the most executive orders. Oh, yeah, him. yeah. He, he would be very dangerous. He would be very dangerous. Well, we're going to wait and see what happens. But right now, let's go to Richard Reeves, who's in Iowa with us now. He's at one of the uh, caucus locations for the Republicans. Richard. Okay, David, thank you very much. Richard Reeves in West Des Moines, Iowa, here at Fair Meadows Elementary Gym. And, you know, one of the things that we needed to talk about when they first started this caucus, we got cut a little bit short, but all day long here on Fox, on CNN, and especially local media, Rubio surge, Rubio surge, Rubio surge, Rubio surge. Mind control level, Rubio surge. And right. I, but at this caucus, unfortunately, it apparently has worked. Have you guys had, had the photo of the table with the three stacks of ballots? Do you all have that photo ready? Uh, I don't think we've got that photo. Oh, here it is. Right oh, there here. it is. Yeah, we got that. Okay, we got that photo. Well, yeah. You guys, you guys should have that. Are they showing the photo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. yep. That photo on the, the first stack, that is the Marco Rubio stack. I don't know who the second stack is. The, the nearest stack is Marco Rubio. There's hmm. a middle a stack that's shorter. Mm -hmm. And the first away stack, that is the Donald Trump stack. So you, you can visually see that it appears, I don't know the exact count yet. We'll know, we'll know the count here in a little bit. But unfortunately, it looks like at this particular caucus that the New World Order has pulled it off in this little caucus area in this neighborhood so, with their propaganda, mainstream media, and their advertising. Mm. That's interesting because, you know, Jeb Bush has spent a lot of money directly attacking Marco Rubio because Marco Rubio and Jeb are trying to get the same establishment uh, donors there. And so he's been pretty, he spent a lot of money to try to take him down. I guess it really speaks to how ineffective all of this television advertising has been this term because it's had absolutely no effect. He spent a lot of money with no effect. Right, but with the news broadcasting that Marco Rubio is surging, Mar like I said mm -hmm. earlier, Self just over and over and over all day long. Every time I turn on Fox, within one or two minutes, the Marco Rubio surge is happening. Every time we turn on CNN, uh, if you got past their commercials, it'd come back from a commercial break. Marco Rubio surging. So right. Yeah, Fox is Fox is one of the worst about that. I mean, remember when they were telling everybody. Oh, Carly Fiorina, Carly Fiorina. And you could see her go up in the polls. And then, you know, they would let that go down. And then they'd pull somebody else up. And they did that the last election cycle, too. Remember how we would have one candidate come up out of nowhere and hold there for a month until Fox News picked up somebody else? They just manipulate the public, especially uh, the, the Republican public with, with, with Fox News. It's amazing to me how Frank Luntz and the rest of these people manipulate the Republicans. Right. Oh, absolutely. Frank Luntz has been on Fox and, you know, manipulating that and, talking to, you know, constantly bringing up somebody that, oh, I like Trump before, but now I like Marco. Or I mm -hmm. like Ted Cruz before, now I like Marco. It seemed like every time I turned that on, it, this morning I flipped it on, and that's exactly what's going on. So we're going to get a count here in a little bit, uh, a little bit of an update of what was going on with the Democratic caucus here. As I sent in a photo of that, and that room was jam-packed. It wasn't as big as this room. It wasn't as big as the gym. But nonetheless, it was packed. And a few minutes ago when I walked over there, they had currently counted the caucus goers for Hillary, and that count stood at about 135, 135. And when I was over there, they were in the process of counting the Bernie Sanders folks. Mm. So uh, in a little bit, we should be able to give you actual numbers probably from both these caucuses here at Fair Meadows Elementary in West Des Moines. Mm. Interesting. And, of course, we're still in the early stages, I think, of uh, votes. In terms of this website that we're looking at here, I don't see – a, a number that shows a percentage of uh, of locations, or, or well, they don't call We've them precincts. We've got the Microsoft oh, okay. polls and numbers right. here. Okay, here. so that's uh, so that's on have, this. How many yeah. have? Per, is that what percentage have called in so yeah, far? Yeah, that's what's been turned in so far. Okay, yeah. Oh, all right. It's in the front one there. Okay, so yeah, we're still waiting to see what happens. But right now, they're showing Cruz as being slightly ahead of uh, of Donald Trump. In terms okay. of percentage well, right I'm now. Sure that so. Some caucuses have submitted their results because I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of many caucuses around Iowa that are smaller than this one. So let us I tell you what break. Let us take a break here and we'll see if we can get you guys some solid numbers to report here shortly. Okay. Good. All right. Thanks, Thank you, now, Richard. Now, guys, I, I have a special guest I want to bring here in studio. Um, you guys know Mrs. Clinton has been out there in a the campaign trail and she's been very busy. She's too busy to go watch the Benghazi movie. 
But if you're watching this right now, Mrs. Clinton is in studio. She, Come on she looks in. hot today, too. She looks Come hot on. today. Hi there, Jakari Jackson. Oh, oh you, get, you got your southern accent well, going on. I am in Texas. I'm caucusing from here. That's how good I am. You go to check the polls Pandering right now. To the... It doesn't even really matter. I mean, you already know I won. I took all the money from George Soros. <laughs> Well, Mrs. I, Mrs. Clinton, we've I think had, you forgot uh, to shave. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, it's all the, it's all that Monsanto they keep giving me over there, and I didn't know it was going to have that effect. I mean, this is really a wig. I'm bald, but you know, the the beard is all coming out. He no, ain't no Hillary. ways tired. Now, Mrs. Clinton, uh, I know you're in no ways tired, but you know, people have been concerned about your I'm health. They're showing tired. up late to the baits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're? <laughs> Are you no, sure I'm you're fine. well enough to... I'm a little lightheaded, but I think that's some Monsanto, too, as well. It's not from when you <laughs> fell and hit your head. No, no, no Mrs. Clinton, <laughs> uh, you were in the... Well, no, it wasn't a debate, but it was a forum where somebody asked you about your husband's activities, about the allegations of uh, all the victims. Do you have any concern or uh, that may impact your campaign? What difference does it make? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win anyways. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm caucusing from Texas. Fulfilled. What do you even? I'm already winning. I don't even have to be there. Come on. Oh, well, you are. Let's let's take a look at your polls numbers here. Uh, <laughs> that's what we got here. I'm sure my caucus has turned out really nice. Uh, so you, right you're now, you know, neck, the numbers are still pretty. I was pretty neck loose, and neck with but, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. What do you think? Once again, being beaten by a man. It's a real possibility here. Who said that I was a woman? <laughs> I've been fooling all y'all for a long time. Clinton's little secret. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Victoria's not the only one with a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go back over here and try to continue to to get people uh, Hillary for president. And I see right. you guys, you keep wearing those Hillary for prison t-shirts. Those things really make me angry. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Clinton. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> well, hopefully she's not back in our IT department. Now, speaking of Hillary Clinton... So we've talked about this, how the State Department is saying that they're going to hold on to some of her emails. They have the deadline is February 29th to release all of these emails. They were supposed to be um, releasing them at the end of every month. But they say, oh, we're going to save. We have these last 7,000 pages. And they were delayed by that snowstorm that happened. So they weren't able to get all of the emails out. And, of course, these are the ones. <laughs> this that, whole thing has been a snow job. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Let's, let's make that clear. Well, and, of course, the whole the whole issue is this, is that now they're reporting that some of these emails are so top secret that they can't even release them. And then she comes out and says, well, they're doing it after the fact, so no one has any clue. Um, now, actually. It's amazing how she just continues to tell the same lie, no matter how much direct documentary evidence there is to contradict it. She keeps saying, well, these are just some people who are out to get me. It's a vast right-wing conspiracy, yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada. And yet this is the State Department saying we aren't going to release these emails. They're too secret to ever release. And that right there says that <laughs> this, this was not done yeah. after the fact. Some of those things, it was confusion, but some of it is malicious. And and I never had any documents on my server that were classified before they got Well, now they're server. saying they have 22 top secret documents. That's uh, being reported by Fox News. And as you're saying, it has operational intel that puts lives at risk. And right. I love this, this scenario where you can do anything, and if it's deemed to be top secret, you just get away. You could literally get away with murder as long as somebody deems it too so top secret to uh, be revealed. Right, exactly. And then we have now a former top watchdog. Uh, they say that the State Department is lying when it says it didn't know until it was too late that Hillary Clinton was improperly using personal emails and a private server to conduct official business because it never set up an agency email address for her in the first place and that this was all planned. Well, one of her defenses is to say, well, what the State Department has done is overclassified this stuff. And it's like, you know what, Hillary? You don't get to make that determination, okay? That's like, you know, if I was to get pulled over by the police for speeding, I would say, you know what? These speed limits are just too low. Let me go. You know? right. <laughs> and, of course, I'm not going to get away with that, but she's going to get away with that because her last name is Clinton. Right. And, well, and, and she can just continue to lie. And to say that she was never, I mean, she was never assigned a state.gov email address. So everybody knew. It's not that she was given the option and then, oh, I just decided to use this one because it was easier no, this was a deliberate uh, means with which to bypass the federal records management there in the government. This was premeditated. Well, if these are overclassified, then what she needs to do is just call up her former employees at the State Department and give them the same instructions that she used to give them via email and say, well, I want you to send this information to me. So if it says classified on the top, 
just cover that up it and out. copy it over <laughs> and send it on the fax machine anyway. You Wipe know, it or like with a cloth. Yeah, cut and paste this <laughs> so that you can get this to me. I want you to send this to me. I don't care if it's Putting secure or not. Just get that top secret classification off the top, and that's essentially what she's telling the State Department now. Right, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of president that she's going to be. She, yeah. What difference does it make? Well, I just put cut, lives cut all the corners and for your personal convenience because she said it, she, it's just easy to have it on her phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not that you couldn't access it Even from though the she phone had either three way. phones, an iPad, <laughs> a laptop. Hey, didn't she have like a, a book that she put out had a picture of her using her phone or a Blackberry? Yeah, uh, that was her... on the back of her bus, actually, when uh, she was oh, there for her oh, book tour. Okay. Uh, they had a, a picture on the back of her bus with her, you know, shade. Yeah, reading she's looking down at the phone like, you know, I'm so cool. And I'm so trendy because I've got a cell phone. It's like, well, that oh, might have been is, kind yeah. of trendy 15 right. years ago. That's well, it right there. It's the famous yeah. picture with her BlackBerry. And then, mm -hmm. but when she came out and said, I only had an iPhone. And then it's like, well, what about the BlackBerry also? And <laughs> she <laughs> yeah. just lies and yeah. lies. But and what lies. difference? Does and of course, it make? her daughter is going right down the same path as her parents. Surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah. They say Chelsea Clinton says Republicans hate speech, quote, is far more troubling, unquote, than attacks on my parents. And they had a uh, situation, this was on the Drudge Report, where they, uh, uh, they said, Donald Trump has called your dad an abuser of women and your mom his enabler. What do you think of his attacks on your parents? And she said, I find what Donald Trump and many of the Republicans, because it's not only Mr. Trump, say about Americans is far more troubling than who, what he says about my parents. Look, it isn't Donald Trump that is saying that about uh, your mom and your dad. It's the people that... Your dad abused. That very then, long list of supposed yeah. victims are saying that right. Donald exactly. Trump has just repeated it. Exactly. The people that are claiming that uh, they were sexually molested, harassed, and raped by Bill Clinton, and then saying that Hillary Clinton made it even worse. And so they're the ones who are saying right. it. It's not Donald Trump. It's not the Republicans. It's the victims, Hillary. But then she goes on to go right down all the typical Democrat shibboleths in one sentence. She says this is broad-based misogyny and sexism and racism and Islamophobia and jingoism <laughs> and homophobia and anti-immigrant rhetoric. I'm quoting her directly. I mean, wow. that, she just, that's what she says, okay? She's Every like a one robot who was like, yeah. glitch, 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 just spitting, <laughs> spitting out all those buzzwords. It's this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. Now I'm done. I, yeah. I've toasted these guys. I've thrown every label at them. She ran through all her talking points, and now yeah. she has nothing else to say. Well, maybe, according to Larry Nichols, Bill isn't even her dad. So maybe she just was like, oh, not my dad. I don't know. See, that's why I'd, I'd like to have seen the Democrat caucus, because I can just imagine that if they're going into one group or the other, the other group is yelling, sexist, racist, homophobe. Yeah. You know, if you're a homophobe, you're over there. you got to come over in this corner and sit with me. You know? I mean, yeah. it's like... I don't know. That That's what it's all about. And I think it's very fitting that they do the Democrat caucus that way because it's Absolutely. all about herd mentality. Herd mentality. It's all about peer pressure. peer pressure. It's all about these ridiculous labels. They so. say they're against bullying and things like that. But then, mm -hmm. you you know, you of course, they're bullying you to come over into their... Well, group. they're liberal and progressive <laughs> and accepting of other people's thoughts and viewpoints until they actually meet somebody with a different thought or viewpoint. Right. And then yeah. they have to beat you into acceptance. Yeah, of publicly shame you. <laughs> It, one of the things I like about Donald Trump are his his enemies. The fact that they are the, the, the enemies of my well, enemy or my friend, that type of thing. <laughs> and, of course, he has some really horrible people who absolutely hate him. One of them, a uh, Saudi billionaire who has connections with Fox Media. And, of course, uh, he says, uh, knockout. Alawid bin Talal caused a decline in Trump's popularity, says the headline. Well, actually, he hasn't been declining in popularity. And even if uh, there's a narrow win here by Ted Cruz, I don't think that's going to make much difference. They were expecting up until the last day or so that uh, Ted Cruz had been slightly ahead of Donald Trump. So they've been within the margin of error uh, for the last several weeks. And we've got an update now from Richard Reeves. It's still hanging as they're getting more uh, uh, polls, and it is still going about 30% Cruz and 27% Rubio. And then 19%—I'm uh, I'm sorry, Trump and then 19% Rubio— Carson at 10%, everybody else uh, below that. Uh, so let's go to Richard Reeves in Iowa. Richard. Okay, David. Uh, as we were talking about just a short while ago, the Marky, Marco Rubio blitz was going on here big time in Iowa on local TV, local radio, CNN, Fox, you name it, the Marco Rubio surge. And in this particular caucus, it apparently has worked because the tally for Donald Trump came up to 56 ballots and for Marco Rubio 108. Hmm. 108. So you said a lot of people applauded for uh, Rand Paul. What was his total? Was he low or high? 
uh, lots of enthusiasm for Rand Paul, I guess, it's, but it was 20. So those 20 were making the noise. Hmm. Uh, and uh, so 